as a prospective Reuter, I would urge you to not only read good books, read terrible books as well, because they can be more inspiring than the good books. It Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the story we're about to look at today. Miracle Man number two from 1985. Um, this is when Eclipse took over. Um, this is a uh, a scan of an original comic book, so you can see that the um, you you can see what it sort of looked like. Um, these reprint some of the uh, old uh, Warrior uh, stuff, and on the credits it does say Alan Moore and Gary Leach. However, um, uh, Alan Davis will actually do um, a big portion of this. So, here we go. The Marvel version has some really, really much better coloring. It does make it a lot easier to read. So, this part here wasn't in the original, meaning this this lettering here, nor was this lettering. This was actually another panel that had, like, uh, water or, or an ocean, but um, this was the title of this chapter here. So, once upon, a, once upon a time, there were three heroes. They knew magic words, they did good deeds, and they killed all the monsters and dragons. They were living happily ever after when one of them died. His name was Young Miracle Man. He died by fire. One up to the dragons. The second hero was called Miracle Man. He came through the fire, but it made him forget he was a hero. He married and lived happily ever after. And Liz says, Mike, he isn't falling. Why, Mike? Until yesterday, yesterday he remembered that he was a hero, but it wasn't until today that he remembered about the dragons. The third hero was only a little boy. He was called Kid Miracle Man, and he was very powerful. Without the other two heroes to bother him, he could do whatever he liked. Why isn't he falling? Keeps screaming Liz. He grew up. He grew up into a dragon. Dragons are what I guess you would call the powerful bad guys here, which is the title of this chapter. Um, why, says Liz. Get out, Liz. Get out of the building. Get out of the area. Now, Liz. She runs. Liz Moran is a brave woman, and she loves her husband very much, but she is only human. She runs. Run as far as you like, Mrs. Moran. I'll find you just as soon as I finished killing your husband and uh here comes kid miracle man's secretary and goes Mr. Bates did you for to be human is not enough and she drops the coffee here as she's just like what the hell I want coffee and she's like oh Christ and he goes you dropped the coffee Stephanie and it, Alan Moore lets us know who she is before you see this here um, her name is Stephanie. She likes Adam and the ants. Her boyfriend's name is Brian. She collects Wedgwood. Her incense have turned to water. She is only human. I love Alan Moore's writing here. It's just so... Anyway, you see what a jerk Kid Miracle Man is. You drop the coffee and just um, kills her instantly. He looks at the charred and pulverized uh, thing that had met the gaze of a dragon. He wants to vomit. He thinks that could have been Liz. He looks at the tiger smile and the dragon eyes of the thing that had once been a boy called Johnny Bates. He wants to vomit. And he thinks, that could have been me. And Miracle Man says, why, John? She hadn't done anything. Jesus Christ, why? Just to show you that I don't mind doing that sort of thing. In fact, I quite enjoy it. That's what I'm going to do with your wife. And he says the magic wor word, which is Kimoda, which is atomic spelled backwards instead of Shazam. Remember, uh, Miracle Man, or at that time Marvel Man, uh, was when they had Shazam, which was known as Captain Marvel, but they lost the... Oh the trademark because they didn't use it uh, for a while so Marvel took it so DC can't use it that's why DC uses Shazam um, that's so read about it um, 
I'm not going to get into, but this is the catchphrase. So it's atomic, like I said, atomic spelled backwards. And here comes Miracle Man. And just boom. And uh, um, Kid Miracle Man says, Well, well, the old man said his magic word and turned into a big blue banana. Do you think you're safe now, old man? You haven't got it, have you? You've only... You were only superhuman for nine years. I've been one for the past 25. I'm stronger. I can do things you wouldn't believe, he says. And he uses his vision to uh, snap him here. Uh, I can hurt you, says Kid Miracle Man here. And it, we're using some um, zipatones and duotones to get these shadings here. Um... So it looks almost like paint, but, and this kid comes, um, it's Superman. Mom, look, it's Superman. He's using his x-ray vision. You said he wasn't real. Hey, are you Superman? I'm Wayne. I thought your film was great. And the mom's calling out Wayne and, uh, Miracle Man. You can just see him go, oh, can you fly? And Kid Miracle says, why? Yes, Wayne. I'm Superman. I can fly. Would you like to fly, Wayne? Uh, well, I don't, I don't, you see my mom and Miracle Man's like, oh my God, that child, he's going to. Come on, Wayne. Mom won't mind. She knows you're safe with Superman. Up, up. And, um, Miracle Man's like, he is. And he just tosses him. Gonna toss him into the building here. Wayne, she screams, kind of, and He's going to splatter against the wall, but Miracle Man catches him. But, of course, um, he's all right. I might, I think I might have uh, broken a couple of ribs. The speed he was traveling, you see, I, I couldn't. Um, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. It was the speed. Give him to me, you bloody monster. And so she's like, oh, Wayne. And here comes Kid Miracle Man. And boom. Great. I love the... Uh, the city over here, kind of like backwards, just beautiful. And here comes uh, Miracle Man. Oh, God, he knocked me into the sky. How did he get so strong? Why is he doing this? Why hasn't he grown up while Miracle Man um, has an age? This is all too fast. I, th I need time to think. Oh, good. Oh, sorry. No good. He's coming after me. So maybe if I hide... In this cloud bank, I can buy myself some time. Can't fight him yet. I'm I'm afraid of him. So, and here he comes. So, this kid is uh, quite something. Scared Moran? Surely not. Surely the big, strong superhero isn't scared of a little kid he used to push around and patronize. Oh, no good hiding, old man. I told you. I'm stronger than you. I can do things that you wouldn't believe. He concentrates. Positive ions begin to build. In the swirling blackness about him. I love this uh, style of writing. Um, and nearby, skin tingling, Aura starting to split and crackle. What is he doing? Of course, Moore tells us he's building a thunderbolt. It's got your name on it. And just bam, and it hits him here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And notice here, even though there's color, there is no border lines here. So, and so he's falling here. Just going, oh, and here comes Kid Miracle Man, not even breaking a sweat, still wearing his uh, tie. Ah, uh, there you are. What's the uh, trouble, old man? Spot of air sickness? Then allow me to escort you down. And then he's going to go very fast. Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3. So this guy is just heading, and he's heading toward the ground here. And Johnny says, Miracle Man and uh drops him you can see him moving on and then drud a crow black shape drops from the seething hell of the sky down to the rim still smoldering crater he is ready to fight again his dragon eyes peer through the curtain of dust searching for a sign of life of survival but there is no sign none at all he smiles a tiger smile after a while, he turns, uh, he turns away to look at the city spread behind him. London huddled against the stinging rain. He knows what to do next. So here, Alan Davis will be the pencils with Gary Leach doing the inking. 
And so the sky cracks, shattering into a thousand black fragments. She drives running the gauntlet of the lightning, running, uh, running for her life. Get out of here, get out of the building, Liz. Get out of the area. I'll find you, Mrs. Moran, just as soon as I finish killing your husband. She drives. And so, um, because each chapter was about a week later, there was always just a tiny little bit of exposition. So, um, each issue was comprised of different chapters. So this is the start of a new, uh, weekly chapter, because this was a weekly uh, series on um, oh my gosh I forgot the name uh, I think Warrior Magazine it could have been and so name Elizabeth Moraine Homo sapien a species until yesterday was thought to be the dominant form on earth yesterday she learned that her husband of 16 years was a superhuman today she met one of her old friends another superhuman a bad one she drives and knows with the fatalism common to her species that no matter how much distance she puts between herself and the stalking horror behind her, it will never be enough. And here he is. Um, and she slams the car into him. So this is the next chapter. So each issue, I think, covers three chapters. And just bam. And so she goes, Mike, and Kid Miracle Man says, I'm afraid you've been a widow for the last five minutes, Mrs. Moran. Mike's dead. Poor old Mike. His own fault, I'm afraid. I'd have been quite happy to achieve my ends the civilized way, steadily accumulating financial and political power. So he says, when I learned that your husband had regained his power, I decided to call him up to meet him to see how much of a threat he posed. Nothing more. But poor old Mike, he tipped my hand, so I killed him. Inch by painful inch, the dead man st uh, staggers out of the underworld. His body is a symphony of shrieking nerve and muscle. Each step a... F uh, f uh, I don't know how you would say. Fugue? F uh, of agony? Fugue? Uh, probably fugue. So, in a way, I find it quite a relief now that Everybody knows what I am. You've no idea how degrading I found it to pretending to be human, he says. And he's uh, crunching her car here. I suppose I was just being overcautious, hiding my light under a bushel, as it were. But no more, Mrs. Moran, no more. Only his mind is calm, stilled by the white-hot silence of a bloody resolve. The dead man has unfinished business into the land of the living. I'm going to do it all, you see, um, where all of them failed, like the pathetic German clown, a stunted syphilitic proclaiming the doctrine of the superhuman. Poor Adolf, he had no idea the real era of the overman starts here, Mrs. Moran. How sad that you won't live to see it. And she's like, oh, God, no, please. And, you know, pleading, but pleading doesn't help. And, of course, here comes uh, Miracle Man behind him. And he's like, Bates. And he's like, his eyes like, shit. And so, bam, leave her alone. And he just punches her great vertical panel there. There's a moment of crystal, uh, crystalline silence. The storm holds its breath. And so it begins. They were friends once, these creatures of near unimaginable power, now horns locked they're fighting to the death in the pounding rain. There's passion here, but not human passion. There is fierce and desperate emotion, but not an emotion that we would recognize. So more kind of being uh, pretty, uh, uh, um, you know, I, I do, I, I can't say, um, but it's just typical, you know, kind of saying something, nothing, but saying something. So, um, so here they go fighting and fighting here. Um, we're going to kind of just move it along here. And these two cops kind of show up seeing them fight. And he's like, bloody Nora, what the hell is going on here? Christ on a bike. I think this is what they call a close encounter. Are you going to ask them to come along quietly? And he's like, shut off. Yeah, right. So I'm getting 
uh, on to headquarters. They might be paying me to handle Brixton, but I'm buggered if they're paying me to handle this. And so we get uh, a call here with uh, one of them. No, no, I know Duggan's not been drinking. Yeah, that's right. Yours is the 10th call so far. Yeah, bloody hell. My words precisely. No, it's not my job either. This one's for the commissioner. And so now they got the commissioner. My God, all right. I want the streets cleared immediately, and I want the army alerted fast. And then I want the home office, code yellow. So, and so we, we get more descriptions, but again, I'm just kind of going to keep going off without reading them here. Uh, more is just filling in um, just kind of stuff here. So, oh God, they're back. The monsters are back, says this guy. So... This guy looks like a CIA agent almost. And so, you know, this keeps going up the chain of command. Meanwhile, Kid Miracle Man is just beating the shit out of Miracle Man here. Yes, you heard extreme sanction. I want you to send for Mr. Cream. So, meanwhile, and just boof, just you can see that there. Oh, God, I can't fight him. He's going to trample over me, over Liz, over the world, and I can't fight him, he says. He's too strong. He's getting kicked here. Oh, too unbelievably strong just here. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And here he is. I beat him. And just all this stuff. I beat him. And here's Liz. Mike, don't be dead. And uh, he kicks him toward her. He thought he was a, a bloody green. I beat him to a whimpering pulp, he says. So, And now I'm going to finish him off. Me, his adoring junior protege. Me, Kid Miracle Man. And he goes, and, and suddenly he said the words. And boom. You can see it here. And uh, he said Miracle, my name, his magic word. He's changed. Changed back to his human form. I've got no choice. I've got to kill him before he has a chance to say it again. Change back to and he's like Miracle Man. Remember, he can't. He he's got to say Kimoda. Don't hit me. I didn't do it. It was him. It was him. No, I couldn't stop him. It was him, Miracle Man, not me. So he's turned back to the kid that he used to be. And this guy's like, oh sweet Jesus. And so he said my name. He and he didn't change back. He hasn't assumed his human form for 18 years. It's it's as if the power buildup behind that thunder flash has burned out of him somehow. And she's like, Mike. And uh, is it over? Oh, God, look at your poor face. Who's that over there? That's Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Bates, former head of the Sunburst Cybernetic. It's him, Liz. And he's like, but he's... Only a child. This is mad, Mike. He he was 13 when he decided to remain a superhuman forever, Liz. He's picking up where he left off. Horrible. And so, should kill him. But, hey, we wouldn't have the rest of these great stories. Liz, we better get out of here soon. The police will soon overcome their caution and arrive on the scene. Come on. It'll be cold but and wet, but I can carry it. What about him? We can we can't do anything for him, Liz. Not now. We'll have to leave him. Uh, you shouldn't have done that either. Just leave him. And uh, I understand his plot, but sometimes when you think about it, you're like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. So, And so Mr. Cream gets a call, finally. So here is Mr. Cream. And he has sapphires for teeth here. And so he's picking up the call. That's so badass. So, all right. We still have Alan Davis um, doing um, doing the pencils. And so there's a couple. This is just a one page here. And this guy here is um, just remembering. Um, this is Sir Dennis Archer, he's kind of like the head of uh, Britain, and this is the uh, uh, Mr. Cream leaving here. And he's remembering how he had killed all the superheroes and villains to get rid of them. But 
obviously it didn't work. So this is him. And he's like, oh, if, you know, he's, he's like, I can't believe that they're back, essentially, what we got here. So um, now we're going to the next chapter here. So I believe um, it's Gary Leach back as artist on this one. So although it could be Alan Davis, but it doesn't tell us so. Um, here, this part does look more like, uh, Gary Leach. However, there's another part coming where you can tell it's Alan Davis. So, um, they're going on an excursion here. Well, we're here. Mayday on Dartmoor. Romantic choice for a day trip. Mike, you, you, uh, you didn't, you, uh, you didn't mind these tests are, are something that we have to do. And Mike says, yeah, well, I suppose it's important. But I think you're overreacting. Most of the headline weren't serious. The Sun's headline was, it's a bird, it's a plane. Um, right. And in the mail, the headline was, they played catch with my baby, mother of injured child speaks. You remember that poor kid with his broken rib? He's like, um, yeah, okay. I suppose we better get on then. Cover your eyes, Liz. And he says, Kimoda, and turns into Miracle Man here. And... He's like, ow, these burns on my, f uh, on my face still hurt, though they might have gone away uh, during the two months that I've been in Mike Moran. So it's been uh, two months since the end of the previous uh, chapter here. They're healing incredibly fast, you know. They uh, just wait there a moment while I get the comics. He says, comics? American comics. I thought if we were going to investigate your power, we better do some research work. I haven't read any when I was a kid. I had a girl's comic Sally or something. Some other stuff better than you'd expect, but most of it is crap. Okay, I made a list. I'll check off what you can do. You can fly, yes. You're very strong and nearly invulnerable. That's right. Liz, I feel stupid. Shush, you said... You can't see through walls. You have super breath. And he's like, super breath? See, this looks like um, Alan Davis here. And so um, now they're, uh, they've are they got uh, Kid Miracle Man here. No change in the patient. I see any more luck finding out who he is? He says, no, the police haven't done any better. Did you hear what he had in his pockets when they brought him in? He says, no. Two three-penny bits dated... 1958 and 60, and he set up bubblegum cards issued in 1963. Nothing else. It's all a bit bizarre, if you ask me. It's certainly no good asking him. He's in a. Asking him. Sorry, and it's certain no good asking him. He's on his world on his own here. And so, here he's, he's being abused in his own mind by Kid Miracle Man. He says, I want to go home. I shouldn't be here. I didn't do anything. Bates, you snot nosed little prat. Has anyone ever told you? I'm sick of hearing your I didn't do it. You're me. You don't understand that, don't you? You are me. But I wouldn't hurt people. I wouldn't kill people. It was you who did that, not me. And he's like, little Johnny Bates wouldn't kill anyone because little Johnny Bates is a cowardly little puddle of puke. But once little Johnny Bates finds that magic word that puts him beyond punishment, why he doesn't mind killing people at all. Snotty little virgin. And now I'm trapped in this puny little prepubescent body in a rancid little nursing home all because you said um all because of you because of miracle man he just better hope i never get out of here that's all and so he just better hope i stay in here forever and uh of course we know it's not gonna happen but hey it's gonna be beautiful when we get there so um, we're just gonna kind of keep going on here. He's trying out all these things. He's invulnerable, all that kind of stuff. And so, and she's checking off the, the things here. Um, and she's like, God knows. I wonder if, um, my mind, if it's all in my mind often enough, but cause of the, just this amazing uh, power that he has. So. Now we're going to go to Mr. Cream here. And so we're not going to read all that, but he's going to basically 
walk into the office here. Uh, good days, Angels of Mercy. I'm Dr. Co uh, Costly, the burn specialist. Come to Mr. Stevens Cambridge. My papers, dear lady. Oh, of course, and you can see the sapphire teeth. Mr. Cambridge in the third room. Uh, on the right, it's empty part of him. You'll see him. I'll see to it you're not disturbed, Dr. Co Costly here. And you can see his shoes. Tick, tack, tick, tack. So, did you see his, his teeth? He had blue teeth. And so, and so, he puts everything in the bag and she goes, um, I was just thinking about the age gap between you and Miracle Man. I think you and Miracle Man are two different people. I think you have two separate bodies. Say there are two bodies, say one exists in uh, real time and space, the other is somewhere else. Until you say your magic word, make the switch. Maybe that body that occupies real time is... The only one that ages. Your body, in your case, the superhuman one, in the case of Johnny Bates, does that make sense? And he says, well, it's a bit science fiction-y. It doesn't explain how we share the same mind if we don't share the same body. Although, it isn't exactly the same mind. He's cleverer than me. Did I tell you that we share the same mind and memories? But he's cleverer than I am. And she's like, hmm, Mike. And he says, yeah. I miss my last appears. I'm going to have a baby. And it isn't yours. It's Miracle Man's. And then he's like, suddenly the sun clears out. He goes, what did you just say? And so here we go. And uh, uh, Mr. Cream, I keep forgetting. And he's like, what do you want? Chocolates? He says, hello, Steve. You can't hear me. You're burst your eardrums. I'm Evelyn Cream. I'm here representing the Spook Show. The Spook Show. What's the Secret Service operator? Oh, you've come to kill me, ain't ya? No, Steve. If you answer my questions, I won't kill you. You have my word on that. How were you injured, Steve? And he says, how was that? It was that reporter bloke, the one who was sick. I had to take him outside we were in the corridor, and I heard him sort of whisper something, and then he exploded. There was a flashlight. Um, you don't believe me. I believe you, Steve. What did he look like? The reporter? He was a sort of middle-aged guy, 45-ish, big bloke. He had a crew cut, and he circles Moran here. Thank you, Steve. You've been terribly helpful. Oh, and remember how I promised not to kill you? He says, yeah. And he goes, I was lying. And here in the I just see it there. And he's reaching out, and oh, what a horrible way to go here as he just suffocates him. And he's just looking at the time here, and you can see the clock um, moving. I mean, he's been holding him for, and oh, what a horrible. Even I go, oh, my God. And so look at this, just tick-tack, tick-tack. Oh. And so, and so... We're in the last chapter here, and so we got Miracle Man flying. I'm just, I'm going to skip over this. He's kind of thinking to himself, um, feeling like um, godish um, because of how strong he is. Well, not stronger than Kid Miracle Man, but so he, he uh, changes back. And so he's back to Michael Moran, and so he's walking home. He's like, hi, hi. How are, th um, how are things in the upper atmosphere this morning? He goes, okay. You feel all right? And he says, fine. So, um, I think he's just jealous of himself. So Liz says, I suddenly thought of something. When you when you were out, you know how your Miracle Man costume got all torn up when you were fighting Johnny Bates? Well, next time you changed to Miracle Man, it was all in one piece again. And we never even notice. Isn't that strange? So anyway, my theory is, and so uh, he goes, Liz, let's not talk about Miracle Man this morning. Let's just have breakfast and be normal people this morning, okay? And so he's reading, and she says, it's the baby, isn't it? And he's like, isn't what the baby? And you can see he moves the, the, the thing even closer to him. And so, oh, give me a break, Mike, please. It's been two months since I told you I was pregnant. And you said maybe a dozen words to me since then. So it was two months. So now it's four months since the battle. So we've wa we wanted kids for years and have and not been able to have one. What's different now? He says, different. Who said anything was different? You're having a baby. Great. 
that's great. Why should I? And then he's like, Ugh, oh, hell. Mike, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. And he says, it's not you. It's me. It just feels so screwed up all the time. It just, all this stuff that's happening and the baby, it's just, it's just that it's not my baby, is it? It's Miracle Man. I can give you a baby. But one night with him, oh, Christ, Liz, he's so much better than I am at everything, he says. And so she's going to try to make him feel better. Mike, what are you talking about? It's your baby. I mean, you're Miracle Man, aren't you? And he's like, I don't know. Essentially, that's what all those words say. So, so Mike is definitely kind of confused here. You can just tell here. Um, he doesn't really know what's going on. Um, says he, he continues here. His emotions are so pure. When he loves you, it's gigantic. His love is so strong, direct, and clean. When I love you, it's all tangled up with who's not doing their share of the washing and twisted neurotic little things like that. Sometimes I want to be him all the time and sometimes I wish he'd just vanish and leave me alone. I'll sort it out. Just give me some space, Liz. I'll sort it out. So, um, Alan Moore definitely brings um, his touch of humanity. It's amazing what happens when you let him construct a nice uh, superhero uh, soap opera here. Hey, look, it's nearly 9 o'clock. I said I'd call in the office by 10 to see what work was going on. Don't worry, Liz. It'll be all right. I promise, he says. I love you, Mike. I really love you. And I love you, Liz, as well as I'm able. Look, I've got to go. Yeah, take care, Mike. No problem. I'm a superhero. Nothing can hurt me. Bye. And she's kind of like, uh-oh. So. And so Mike Moran is walking. And, of course, he's being observed here by Mr. Cream. Love the teeth here. Um, I definitely think that... Uh, Alan Moore definitely wanted him, you know, to, to stand out here. Um, and again, you can see here some duo tones and duo shade um, in there. So, and so he's going to work here. And so Julie says good morning to him. And uh, this guy here is on the phone with something and then asks Mike's to have a have a seat here so they had a story so this is an editor it's kind of like very supermanish here he's the editor he was going to run a story about miracle man in that fight but the government they uh told him not to so mike says that uh he came kind of looking for a job here that um he might have a job for him and the editor says, did I? Well, look, I'm sorry, Mike, but it's a bit thin on the ground at present. I'm having to give all the work to the staff people. Give it a go next week, okay? So um, he's now by the elevator here. And so um, he comes in, and you can see Mr. Cream is uh, right there. And uh, um, this lady asks him to hold the baby because he's, he's got to find the bottle here. And so here he is holding the baby and uh, you can see Mr. Cream from behind Mr. Moran. And he goes, yeah. And he uh, takes a gun and says, how are you going to change to America, man, without roasting that innocent little baby the way you roasted that terrorist? And um, he looks and uh, um, we've got a tense moment here and he shoots here. Um, sees the blood. He knows he can't change. And notices the teeth as and he's like, what? He thinks, what a stupid way to die. And then finally, why the sapphire teeth? So this actually is the end of the issue right there. So Miracle Man, ah, excuse me. Miracle Man number two. This was originally published by Eclipse Comics, which was a, um, a reprint of the work from Warrior from uh, 1981. Like and subscribe, and I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.